In this screencast, I would like to talk to you about pulmonary and systemic gas exchange and alterations of gas exchange mechanisms. Gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs in the lung and in the peripheral tissues. The major aim is to deliver oxygen to tissue and eliminate, get rid of carbon dioxide from tissues. Ventilation provides air to the alveoli uh, for gas exchange processes and the gas exchange occurs by simple diffusion. This is something important to remember. The simple diffusion occurs in lungs and uh, the exchange of gas happens with the, occurs with the external environment. And a tissue, the exchange of gas, occurs with the internal environment. In lungs, oxygen is picked up and carbon dioxide is released at the respiratory membrane. On the other end, at tissues, oxygen is released and carbon dioxide, which is a uh, waste product of internal respiration, is picked up. Now, although the gas exchange occurs by simple diffusion, there are three major anatomical features that are favoring uh, this process. The respiratory membrane uh, is highly permeable to gases. Both respiratory and blood capillary membranes are very thin and the alveoli occupy a very large surface area. And later on, when, you, when we will talk about the physics that is uh, regulating the gas exchange, you will understand more about the importance of a, um, these anatomical features, particularly uh, how important is the fact that the membranes um, across which gases are exchanged has to be thin in order to facilitate this diffusion and uh, you will understand more about uh, how important is that the surface area of the alveoli is large again to favor the simple diffusion of gases. To understand the uh, gas exchange is important to remember the role of the pulmonary circulation which is a portion of the cardiovascular system which carries deoxygenated blood away from the heart through the pulmonary artery to the lungs and returns oxygenated blo blood back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. Pulmonary gas exchange occurs at the respiratory membrane shown in, uh, in this uh, uh, figure in light blue here. Oxygen enters the blood bloodstream and carbon dioxide exits the bloodstream and the pulmonary gas exchange allows the blood to become oxygenated and carbon dioxide which is the waste product of cellular respiration to be removed from the blood. The systemic gas exchange occur at tissue level occur uh, in, the, in the working tissues and carbon dioxide enters the bloodstream and oxygen exits the bloodstream. Systemic gas exchange allows the oxygen to diffuse out of the bloodstream, cross the interstitial space here in a light blue and enter the tissue. On the other end, carbon dioxide diff can diffuse out the tissue, cross the interstitial fluid and enter the bloodstream. In the next couple of slides, I will talk to you about the physics of gas exchange mechanisms, and I will, uh, I would like you to remember a couple of laws that are regulating uh, gas diffusion and uh, partial pressure of gases. So the first law I like you to remember is this fixed law of gas diffusion, which states that diffusion of gases is directly proportional to a diffusion constant, constant which depends on gas solubility, temperature, molecule size, membrane permeability, but also is directly proportional to the area for gas exchange. Remember I told you the alveoli occupy a very vast uh, area uh, surface. The diffusion is also proportional to the difference in partial pressure of gas in either side of barrier to diffusion. And diffusion 
in, is inversely proportional to d, to distance, to the thickness of barrier to diffusion. The second law I like you to remember is the Dalton's law of bar or partial pressure. This law allowed you to calculate the partial pressure of, of gases. And uh, this law states that in a mixture of non-reactive gases, the total pressure exerted, uh, um, exerted is equal to the sum of partial pressures of the individual gases. So a mixture of three gases, X, Y, Z, is given by the sum of the partial pressure of the three gases. And the partial pressure of a gas is directly related to the specific gas concentration. So it's calculated, as shown in here, by multiplying the fractional concentration of a gas to, to the uh, pressure, barometric or atmospheric pressure in this case, divided by 100. So if you consider this uh, formula, you can then calculate the par partial pressure of oxygen of carbon dioxide at sea level. Considering that the concentration of oxygen is 20.9% uh, in the air at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeter of mercury, and the partial pressure, if you apply this formula, uh, it can be calculated as 159. You can also calculate the uh, partial pressure of carbon uh, dioxide, which is equal to 0.3. Why this is important? Because the, uh, these two laws, the laws I just described, are regulating the gas exchange mechanisms occurring in our bodies. A pressure gradient for oxygen and carbon dioxide is responsible for the simple diffusion of gases across the membrane. And at the respiratory membrane, the partial pressure of gases is different between alveolar air and the blood of the capillary, as shown also in this figure in here. We will look into this figure in more details in, uh, in the next slide. In tissue, the partial pressure gradient are opposite of those present at the respiratory membrane. And because of that, in the lungs, oxygen is picked up and CO2 is removed into the alveoli. Uh, the oxygen enriched blood can return to the heart through the pulmonary vein, as I mentioned earlier. And then the oxygen rich blood leaves the heart through the aorta and uh, into the body. And oxygen can be then delivered to tissues where the uh, carbon dioxide can be then picked up and the, oxy uh, the, um, the blood can return to the heart through the uh, uh, vena cava shown in this uh, picture. So let's take a look at this um, um, cartoon in uh, more detail. What happened at alveolar level? So the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is higher than in the blood of the capillary. So have a look at these uh, um, two um, rectangle, light blue rectangle here. As you can see, the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is higher. It is about 104 millimeter of mercury. Then the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood of the capillary, which is about 40 millimeter of mercury. The difference, this difference, creates a very strong pressure gradient that causes oxygen to rapidly cross the respiratory membrane from the alveoli into the blood. What about the partial pressure of carbon dioxide? As you can see also, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is different and is uh, higher in the blood that, uh, uh, of the capillary compared to the uh, partial pressure of the uh, alveoli. Again, this will uh, create a, um, a, 
a, a difference in partial pressure and as a result, the carbon dioxide will be released in the alveoli from the blood. So the oxygen and carbon dioxide can diffuse across the respiratory membrane. What happened at tissue level? Well, now have a look at the uh, rectangle um, that are um, shown in uh, light uh, pink in the in the cartoon. The partial uh, the partial pressure of oxygen in working cell or tissue is lower than in the arterial blood. As you can see, the partial pressure of oxygen is less than 40 millimeter of mercury in the tissue, but is uh, about 100 millimeter of mercury millimeter of mercury in the uh, arterial blood. So obviously this um, uh, creates a pressure gradient that causes oxygen to dissociate from hemoglobin, diffuse out of the blood, cross the intersectional space as I mentioned earlier and enter the tissue. On the other end the partial pressure of CO2 is higher in the working tissue, and as you can see, it's greater than 45 millimeter of mercury if compared to the partial pressure of CO2 in, uh, in the blood, which is 40 millimeter of mercury. So CO2 can then diffuse out of the tissue into the blood. So earlier, when I was talking about the fixed law, you learned that the diffusion of gas across the alveolar membrane can increase with the increased surface area of the membrane, because it's directly proportional, can increase with an increase in alveolar pressure differences, but will decrease when the membrane, uh, uh, diffusion membrane, will increase in thickness. And uh, of course, a uh, factor that can alter this um, parameter can impact on the um, ability of gases to diffuse. So strenuous exercise or respiratory conditions such as fibrosis or pulmonary edema or even high altitude can interfere with the oxygen diffusion processes and actually alter the delivery of oxygen to tissue. So, for example, think about the partial pressure of oxygen at a high altitude. This is reduced. Why? Because the atmospheric pressure is, uh, is also uh, different. And if you apply the formula that uh, we used before to calculate the partial, partial pressure, you will find that the partial pressure of oxygen at a uh, altitude of 4,500 meters is actually equal to roughly 92. What does it mean? It means that meaning the partial pressure of, uh, of uh, gradient for oxygen is reduced, therefore the diffusion of oxygen will be reduced and the delivery of tissue, uh, sorry, of oxygen to tissue will be impaired. In lung fibrosis, because the thickening of lung tissue is increased, the alveolar wall thickness is also increased. Because of that, you can have a decrease in the diffusion capacity of the lung. Uh, this happened uh, during emphysema, for example. But during emphysema, you have also a destruction of alveoli, and this will reduce the area for gas exchange, again, impacting on the ability of gases to, uh, to diffuse. <laughs> 